morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, excellent. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Simo, and I'll be your presenter for this class. Just a quick introduction, and I'll get to know you a little bit, and uh, we'll get started. Uh, I used to be a professor at the George Washington University uh, with the Continuing Education Program back in the 80s, teaching satellite communications and wireless communications. In 1986, I started a company called Space 2000. Space because I was doing satellite communications. It's 2000 because then I intended to retire in the year 2000. <laughs> After talking to my accountant, he wisely recommended I change the name of the company to Space 4000. So, <laughs> uh, in 1986, I uh, uh, joined a committee looking at the uh, development of CDMA standards in the United States. As you probably know, uh, in 1988, the GSM standard was adopted in Europe. And the impetus for GSM was that in Europe, uh, most of the countries before digital had a different analog standard. So it was very difficult to move from one country to another in Europe with the same phone. So, uh, and you'll see that in the United States, the uh, impetus for digital transition was more driven by capacity, not so much the, the standard and the pan-American roaming. So we're looking for a technology standard with very good frequency efficiency or good capacity uh, yield. And as a matter of fact, to get a license for PCS, you needed to demonstrate that your technology could improve the AMS technology by at least a ratio of 10 to 1. So you had to improve your capacity 10 times relative to AMS. So that's how we I got, got involved in the CDMA work initially. And as you know, in 1991, the standard was approved as IS-95. And uh, ever since, I uh, became s uh, somewhat a world ambassador for, for doing the CDMA, uh, trained over 14,000 people. Uh, in, the, in the industry since then, including the team that installed the first commercial CDMA in the world in Hong Kong in 1994, and the team that also installed the, the first C commercial CDMA in the United States in California in 1996. Since then, I've trained a lot of people throughout the United States, in Latin America, in China, and right here. My first CDMA presentation here was in 1996. I helped bring the M1 account to Motorola back in 1996, and uh, uh, that, that's basically what, uh, what I've been doing. I've been involved also in the development of the 3G uh, standard, the, uh, the 1X RTT. We'll be talking about some of that this, uh, this week. And of course, the evolution to EVDO, and that we'll be talking about those too. Uh, one thing that I did back in 1994 is that I was also a finalist to NASA's astronaut selection. And I bring this up uh, because uh, my team, some of my uh, teammates, my co finalists was at, were actually members of the Columbia that we just lost a couple of years, maybe last year, uh, last year. Uh, one of my partners uh, with whom I teamed up for the final uh, process was actually the pilot for that particular mission. To do this more to pay tribute to them than, uh, than anything else. Now, let me uh, th uh, tell you that my sessions, I like them to be very interactive. So throughout the presentation, I want you to ask any question you wish in the CDMA field, of course. I want you to not to hesitate to ask questions as we go. As we go. Let's get started. I'm going to, um, before we hit the, uh, the actual course material, to give you maybe three different tutorials. I call these fundamentals. I didn't include those here, but it is important for us to, I want you to follow what we'll do here and invite you to be interactive with this. And this is why I want to do the tutorials. One, if you consider somebody who has no concept of frequency, such a person cannot understand FDMA. If you take somebody who has no notion of time, such a person cannot appreciate TDMA. And likewise, if you consider somebody who has no concept of coding, then it's almost impossible to understand CDMA, right? So I think the starting point is to define the basis, i.e., what are codes, in, as in CDMA, and how do we use these codes, right? That's, I think, the first, the first place to start. And once we understand that, then we'll basically created an, a, a, an architecture of the channels, because you'll see that these channels 
are defined by coding. So let me uh, start with a simple comparison of the various standards. But at the very top level, what, how do we actually identify a mobile in a damn way? What? What? Long PN code. The long PN code is the uplink. That's right. That's how the phone talks to the network. Exactly. But if I want to talk to you or to you or to you, what's the channelization code? Walsh. It's called the Walsh code, right? Now, I'm sure that you would have guessed the frequency, so I'm going to write this down. What else? The short PN code, perfect. We'll still continue to use the short PN code just like before. Very good, very good. And then what? Very good. Then with the time slot, perfect. So we'll use time slots this time. This time, but these time slots will also have wash codes with them, right? But essentially the time slots. In my sense, then I will. Uh, 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 compare this to a language, to the social languages that we, we talk. Now, uh, <laughs> I'm going to try this. Consider a language. I, I submit to you that in order for two people to communicate, they have to have a common database of words. Right? Very good. Uh, and this is what we say. If I say to you, a green car. You put the word green in your database and car in your database and press search. And if you can see words like that, that's a match, right? And you see pictures of <coughs> wonderful green cars. The one I see is a Ferrari, but I don't know about you. <laughs> and, and then, but if I were to put, uh, if I say uh, to you, um, Une chaussette jaune. French. That's French. <laughs> you put the word in your database, <laughs> press search, and the return will be nothing found. <laughs> That's zero correlation. <laughs> right? There's no match. And therefore, you didn't find it. But if I, I'm going to try this. I know I'm on camera, but if I if you say, shish it. <laughs> you put it in your database, and what do you see? What does that mean? Thank you. Thank you. Very good. There's a correlation. So you can now say that CDMA then is really a language division multiple access, where we're dealing with electronic languages instead of social languages.